welcome to Dead Man Talking. Tonight's story, we welcome back a good friend of the show, Born Beach, from over on Reddit, No Sleep. And as always, please do let us know what you thought down below in the comments box. Please do like and share. It really does help build the channel and our community further. And why not hashtag Team Fear and DMT's Cryptid Crew. And so, with that aside, let's get into tonight's story. And title. I inherited a lighthouse in the woods. There's a storm coming and it's bringing a nightmare. Let's get straight into that. I slushed through the shallow river and up onto the shoreline, drenched and bruised. I felt emotionally exhausted, physically ruined. I felt like I had reached the end of my rope, but I knew I wasn't finished yet. I was just getting started. Harriet! I shouted. Hold on! I'm coming! I stumbled forward, feet slapping the dirt in a haphazard directions, like a marionette dragged on strings. My mouth was parched. I needed to drink something to eat something. I felt weak. My eyes strained in the glow of the lighthouse, a rotating beacon bathing me in ethereal blue. Harriet! I shouted again, this time wheezing, a little closer. I stepped onto the grass, yellowed with the kiss of autumn. The winding brickwork of gloom fall stood before me, rising into the black of the night sky. Ivy draped across it. Oh, this place. It was just like it was in my memories. Haunting, otherworldly. A rumble met my ears, a gentle thump-thump of footsteps racing down old wooden stairs, and a moment later, the door to the lighthouse swung open. Candlelight spilled onto the courtyard, and there, framed in the doorway, stood Harriet. She was fine, alive, healthy. Thank God, I muttered, suddenly feeling the full weight of my exhaustion. My chest still burned from my sprint. It came in heaves. I fell to the grass, my hands clutching at clumps of the dried mess. Why was my head spinning, fainting? I was fainting. Harriet ran over to me, and I think she called my name. She looked like a picture-perfect memory, like everything else here, untouched by the grip of time. She wore blue jeans, a grubby red t-shirt, and her dark hair had been pulled back into a tight ponytail. Jasper? She dropped to her knees in front of me frantically checking my face for any wounds, looking over my body for any traces of heavy bleeding. I thought you were dead. <laughs> Makes two of us, I said, my own voice distant. The world flickered. It dimmed. I was losing my grip on staying awake, staying conscious. I needed a break. Just a short rest would do. <sighs> I made it, Harriet. I came back. I know, she said and in the back of her voice was something else. A tone. Something uncomfortable and disarming. Regret? Guilt? I'm sorry, Jasper. I I'm so sorry. Sorry? I repeated, head spinning. And there was a reply. I don't know what she said in response. I couldn't quite make it out because the grass, harsh as it was, felt so nice against my cheek. The cold ground. A place to rest. A place to sleep. A smile crept across my face as my body entered its own involuntary shutdown sequence. And just before the light went out in my head, a thought struck me. If the stick man was here, then why hadn't he killed Harriet? And then, as if to answer, a tall shadow stretched over us, looming over Harriet's kneeling body like a crooked creature with two long limbs and an ill-fitting top hat. It had no face, no features. It tilted its head towards me and a voice rang out in my mind. The last voice I heard before my world faded to black. Finally, we can begin. You're up. Harriet stood over me, a warm rag in her hand. She pressed it into my forehead. Ugh, what happened? I muttered, blinking. It looked like we were inside the family cottage. A stout wooden cabin that sat atop a hill beside the lighthouse. The stick man is here. Harriet finished for me. Always. Uh, here? I shook my head, 
mind still trying to catch up to the situation. I glanced around. I couldn't see anything beside the softly crackling stove in a corner of the room. My old childhood bedroom. Where? Outside, she said, lips pulled into a tight frown. Stand and watch. For what? For her. Harriet spoke the words with an edge, a sort of bitterness I didn't remember her having. She looked stressed. Her blue eyes, normally bright, were dull and grey. The decrepit one? I asked, wondering if she was referring to the hag that roamed the phantom wood. We'd long known she had ambitions for Gloomfall. She wanted to take the lighthouse for herself, though for what end, none of us knew. And Harriet placed her hands on her hips. Questions? Really? You've got about a dozen different toxins poisoning your bloodstream right now, Jasper. It's a wonder you're still alive. You need rest, not stress. I'm pretty sure I've watched every last haunt in the Phantom Wood chase you onto the property. More than a few got to swing at you, too. I winced. That explained the throbbing pain in my side, as well as the awful nightmares I'd had. Oh, my letters of safe passage got blown away, I said sheepishly. <laughs> you don't say. She dabbed at a wound in my shoulder. Harriet had always been a prodigy when it came to medicine, to alchemy, to potions in general. I'd seen her nurse dad back from the brink of death more times than I could count. Harry, I said softly, about dad. The corner of her mouth twitched. She dabbed the ointment more forcefully into my shoulder, and I clenched my jaw against the alcohol sting. Let's not talk about dad, okay? Not right now. And I nodded. Yeah, sure, of course. Whatever you need. I had never been close with our father mostly owing to the fact that he blamed me for our mother's death. He always said I should have shouted, screamed. He said I should have done anything to stop Jasper from killing Mum, from eating her. The stick man, I said quickly, trying to push the memory from my mind. He said he, he came here to kill you. That I did too. What did he... I don't know. I don't know a damn thing about anything anymore, Jasper. And it's making me scared and frustrated... And angry and... and... Her voice trailed off. It became a series of choking sobs and Harriet turned her back to me, balling up her fists. She was never one for these kinds of displays. She'd always been the stronger of the two of us, the more resilient. It's why she stayed behind in Gloomful while I fled. She could handle things that I couldn't. But whatever this was, was a bridge too far. He shut up the night to send that letter to you. Harriet said, one hand against the opposite wall, tears suddenly falling to the floorboards. He appeared at the end of my bed and I thought I was having another nightmare, a bout of sleep paralysis. But then he reached out and touched me. He ran a hand through my hair, told me he'd been sent to kill me, but that he hoped he wouldn't need to. What? And she turned, wiping her arm across her sniveling nose. Yeah, that was my response too. He told me that something was coming to Gloomfall, and that it intended to break the magic of the lighthouse, crumble it to bricks, something vile. My heart skipped a beat. Wesley, was the stick man talking about our brother? Harriet, I said quickly. On the way back here, uh, back in the wood, I saw Wesley. Harriet said before I could finish. I blinked at her, trying to catch up to the situation. Well, how did you know that? And she sighed, her fingers gripping the edge of the window sill as more silent tears fell down her face. There's a lot you've missed in the years you've been gone. Too much. A strange anger flared within me. You knew about Wesley? And I sat up, grimacing as pain lanced through my spine. What the hell is going on, Harriet? First dad dies and then you're hanging out with the stick man and now, now you're telling me you've been in contact with Wesley? He killed her mother, for God's sake. You don't think I know that? She snapped, meeting my eyes for the first time. You don't think I remember seeing him eat Mom's heart? Hearing him chew it between his bloodstained teeth? You might have seen the whole thing, but I got to see the climax to that little nightmare. Don't you dare forget that. And Harriet would see them. We both were. Children, children, came another voice. This one sleek as silk. It drifted from the window, and a moment later, a tall shadow craned its head into the room, 
its featureless face gazing at us beneath a flickering top hat. Do I sense an air of hostility in the room? Ugh, you. I growled. You shouldn't be allowed to step foot on this land. You're a haunt. The lighthouse should burn you to ash. Ah, said the stick man, slinking into the room and twisting and contorting its long body through the window as Harriet stumbled backwards, face painted in various shades of disgust. The prodigal son, how good to see you've returned to us. I've been meaning to speak with you. Answer the question, I snarled. The stick man's voice hummed with the notes of amusement. <laughs> My immunity to the lighthouse's charms is little different to yours, I suspect. I am a haunt, yes. Not all haunts are made of darkness, however. I manifest as a shadow, yes. But I am something more beyond my physical form, as we all are. The lighthouse can see this, even if your eyes cannot. You'll excuse me if I don't buy it, I said. You told me I'd kill my sister. And indeed you will. Or you will if I do not kill dear Harriet first. I reached towards the stick man, reached to throttle him, but my hands passed through him, and instead I fell onto the floor with a painful crash. Jasper, Harriet said, rushing to my side. Have you lost your mind? I said you needed to rest. I'm here because you told me to come. I shouted, my temper having completely divorced itself from my better sense. I nearly got myself killed in that fucking forest because you asked me to come home. And now I'm here, and you're treating me like I'm a nuisance. But listening to this thing? The ground shook. Harriet rose to her feet leaving me there wincing on the floor. I'm not listening to anybody. Did you even hear what I said to you? The whole of Gloomfall has lost its damn mind. Nothing makes sense anymore. The laws are breaking, Jasper. Things aren't working as they're meant to. I've had to deal with that for the last month, while you've... The ground shook once more, this time violently. The cottage groaned. A rush of wind tore through the window, rattling the shutters and extinguishing the candles. In darkness took us. Goose flesh covered my skin. Harriet, I breathed. You okay? I'm fine, she said curtly, though there was an edge of terror in her voice. What is it? She asked, though not to me. It is her, said the stick man. Who? I hissed. You've crossed the path once already, he said. Out there, in the bleak of the wood, she found you. Your brother came to your aid then, though I am certain he was unsuccessful in defeating her. Who is she? She is the storm that shatters, the scion of calamity that will untether the strings that bind this place, the beast in the dark. Look now, do you see it? I struggled to my feet, ignoring the pain writing through my limbs. I felt blindly in the dark finding a wall, and then dragging myself up to lean against the window. The shutters slammed furiously, and I squinted into the raging gale. Far away, sitting atop the rolling waves of the phantom wood, swelled a sea of clouds, pulsing with veins of red lightning. My jaw fell open. Harriet appeared at my side, and I could tell from her sharp gasp that this was new to her too. It's growing, she said, frightened. It's larger than before. Yes, replied the stakeman, and it will continue to grow, continue to feed until it swallows us all. How do we stop it? I croaked. I am uncertain if you can, muttered the stakeman. It would require the destruction of the creature that breathes life into that thunder. Your brother tried, and he failed. Wesley tried? I asked. Harriet's fist slammed against the wall. Enough with the cryptic bullshit. Just tell us who's behind the storm and we'll deal with it. This is what our family does. We kill monsters. Ah, said the stick man. And therein lies life's cruel poetry, for this monster is already quite dead. As a matter of fact, you buried it yourselves. He lifted a long arm pointing a hooked finger out towards a stone rising from the yellowed grass outside. It stood in the shadow of the lighthouse, 
lit up in the flashes of far-off lightning. No, Harriet said, stumbling backwards. I couldn't see her face in the dark, couldn't see her expression, but I could hear the pain in her words. You're lying. How could you lie about that? Something you both should know, said the stickman, lifting a leg through the open window, is that I never lie. He stepped over the sill with the other, the rolling shutters passing through him as though he weren't even there. He tipped his top hat. The beast in the dark is a creature you are well familiar with, for she was the one who gave birth to you. Mum? I muttered, gazing at the gravestone in terror. I am afraid so, child, and you'll be sorry to hear she wants nothing more than for you both to join her in the dirt. Why? roared Harriet, rushing to the window. Why would her mother want that? She was kind. Karen, she loved us. And the stick man considered Harriet. His scarecrow frame lit up in the sweep of the lighthouse's glow. Memories are fickle things, aren't they? And with that, he then turned and sprinted into the dark of the phantom wood, towards the rolling storm. Wow, 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 wow. Certainly another one. Wow. What an intriguing, chest pounding, and superbly written story there from our good friend, Born Beach, from over on Reddit, No Sleep. Once again, a big thank you, Born, for allowing me to narrate your work on the show. Each and every time is such a thrilling read with intriguing characters and spine tingling action. Guys and girls, I'll leave a link in the description box below at which you can grab Born Beach's brand new book. Featuring some of his most popular stories, the perfect present for any horror fan. Of course, Bourne, I hope you enjoyed this rendition and really do look forward to any updates in this incredible series in the future. Well, guys and girls, as ever, you know the drill. Please do let us know what you thought down below in the comments box. Please do like and share. It really does help build the channel and our community further. And why not hashtag Team Fear and DMTs cryptid crew. Now if you can pen a story packing that much punch, then please do get in touch with me at the contact email, which is as on screen. Contact the dead one at gmail.com. I really look forward to hearing from you. I hope you're all fighting fit. Whatever it is that you do, I hope you're surrounded with loved ones and friends and eating plenty of food and necking back a good few drinks. But above all, remember, be safe. Not sorry.